Today's message it is, um, I hope it encourages you. I truly do. Lord Jesus, we, we come here this morning uh, with an ominous feeling around us in our society and the world. And God, we pray that you would just watch over and, uh, and guide and protect us uh, through whatever may be coming next. Lord, I tell you what, it's been a long, long year, a long 18 months. And it seems like there's always something else coming over the horizon, unlike any time I've ever seen in my entire life. But I've learned more and more to put my hand in your hand and just trust you through the fire. Whatever it may be, whatever may come, I have the King of kings and the Lord of lords beside me to walk me through. And I know that of the people sitting here to, this morning with us, Lord, that you are here with us, that we are here to worship you. We are here to lift you up. We are here to praise your holy name as we join once again on this Lord's day to worship you. I ask, Lord, that you'd watch over us, guide us, help us, lead us, protect us. Let your Holy Spirit cover this room and may it go out to all the world that they may hear the gospel of your peace. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. Um, a lot of people have the feeling in this hour that it's the end of the world, right? <laughs> have you not felt that? Has you not felt it rise back up? perhaps, in, in our society. But I'm here to tell you, it's not the end yet. We have seen some things that I would not have imagined in my lifetime occurring. We've seen the shutdown of our entire country, right? Who would have imagined that? I never would have imagined that. Maybe some of y'all are more clairvoyant than I, but I never would have imagined that. I never would have imagined people having to wear a mask in all these different places and stay secluded. I never, well, this is what I never really would have imagined. I never would have imagined political officials arguing that it is more essential to keep a liquor store open than it is to keep a church open, okay? <laughs> I never would have imagined that. But, uh, but that's what we have seen here recently, right? We have seen some strange times in the last 18 months or so now. I fear a desire is on us now to shut the doors again. You know, that's, that's kind of what we hear all around as these things are coming. But friends, I'm here to tell you the door isn't shut until Jesus shuts the door, okay? Until he does so, and he hasn't shut it yet. And this time has taught me something too. The importance of this ministry. You understand me? The importance of having a place for people to come and worship. The urgency that we have to get the ministry and the mission out to the world. How urgent, how important are all these things. And I see it now in a way that I had never saw it before. Have you ever wondered why, uh, as you go through your Bibles, there's so much information about the end of the world, right? I mean, there's tons of, I mean, uh, I think about a third of the Bible is prophecy, right? But all of this being prophetic, and if the rapture comes like we believe it does, we're never going to see none of that, right? Amen. Uh, but we are encouraged to understand what's going to happen at that time. There is a benefit to it. Man, in fact, there's a blessing, it says, that comes just by studying the book of Revelation, right? And so I can tell you, I believe, uh, what's going to happen. I know that. I, that's knowledge in my mind about what's going to happen in the future. Now, I may be wrong, but, uh, but I don't think so because I've studied over a long time and the Lord will tell me when I get there, all right? But the way I see it, the rapture comes first. That's when God calls His true church out of this world. Not the ones on the church roll, but the ones on the roll in heaven, all right? He calls all of us out of here at the beginning. Then there is this seven years tribulation. That's the second thing to happen. And that's God's wrath upon this world, okay? His wrath comes down upon us. And then third, there'll be the second coming of Christ. He'll come back. He'll set up the reign for a thousand physical years here upon earth. We will uh, rule and reign with Him there 
on this world. Uh, Israel will uh, have the, all the land that they were uh, told that they would have. All these things will happen in that millennial kingdom. But then, at the end of all this, there will be this final judgment where God will look over the works of every man and then he will purify this world with fire. That's what the scripture tells me and what I've understood from it. All that's there. But why is it there if I'm never going to really partake in that? You know, I'm going to be taken away from all that. Why is that there? How does that help me right now to, to, to live and breathe and act according to what Christ wants me to do? Uh, what does I see there? Well, I think that the Lord has a specific message to the church that's aware of that end timeline. He does. And it's in the book of Revelation. If you'll turn there in your Bibles, Revelation. It says here in Revelation 3 and verse 7, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. You may be seated. Now, I'll give you a little bit of the background here. Uh, these uh, seven churches that are spoken of in the, in the book of Revelation, uh, there's a timeline there as well. It kind of shows how all of church history goes all the way up to the end. There's one more church age that you see, the church of Laodicea there at the very end, and it's kind of an a in and out church. But this church will be there right before the rapture of the church also at the end, this church of Philadelphia. And he is speaking of that to those who are faithful to the Word of God here in the end times. That's the church of Philadelphia. And God has set before us an open door. An open door. I really wish that we could get a sense of the urgency about sharing the gospel with others. I mean the urgency of it. It's highly important that this message gets out to all the world. Do you understand what I'm saying? During COVID, I got a picture of what it looks like to have the door shut a little bit. Right? Y'all got it too, didn't you? What it looks like to live your life without meeting with the people of God. And folks, it was terrifying. All right? It was terrifying. Not just for me, but what I saw going on in others. God showed me the importance of having God's house available to the people. I saw many, and still have saw many, fall away, weakened in their faith because of that not being able to attend the church, not being able to be with one another, not being able to have that connection anymore. Weakened in their spirit. I myself was weakened spiritually during this time. Can I get an amen here? Does somebody understand what I'm talking about here? Did you feel this way as well? Was that not in your heart? Was you not weakened by that? There is a, there's a scriptural reason why that was occurring. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says, And let us consider one another, and to provoke unto love and to do good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You see, it, it isn't just being able to attend a service. You understand? It isn't just being able to even physically be here right now. To be part of the church is to be relational. There is a, a call to love and good works. I can't love you. You know, that's an odd southern term. I'm, we're going to love on you. I always thought that was kind of weird to people coming in and didn't know what that meant. But, but, but you can't love on somebody if they're not there, right? And you can't understand how it is to, to love people even when you're kind of frustrated with them and all these different things. You can't have that relational connection without being together, can you? You don't know what that is. And God tells us not to forsake that assembling. That it is very important. Now, now he closed the door in a sense because of the disease, right? We had to watch what we were doing. But my goodness, he showed me very clearly the danger in that. You know? The danger and the hurt in that. The people who were affected by that. Who, uh, it attacked them. You see, no man shutteth the door. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't bring COVID. I'm just a steward of this house. God brought it through. 
And we had to deal with the things that were going on. Only God can shut the doors physically, but he can only sh- he's the only one who will shut the doors spiritually as well. You know, when Noah was put on the ark, he's on there a long time. I looked it up this week. It was about a year. He was in there. God closed the door and locked him in. He was all by himself. He's sitting there inside that ark and they fed the animals every day and his family was around him. That was all there was in the whole world. I think i got a picture of what that might look like now. You know? I mean, he didn't have a telephone. You know, everybody else was drowned to death, okay? There was nobody else to access. But I think i got a small help and an idea of what that might be like. And this is what we did during COVID. We walked around. We are waiting. We're slowly thinking about all the missed opportunities. I don't know about you. Did you think about that? Here's the thing. I think some people thought, man, I kind of like this. I'm glad. I'm outside. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when the kids uh, are left to play. You know what I'm saying? The kids are left to play and they're like, well, they ain't going to tell me to go to church. See, some people think they come to church for the idea that they have to. Folks, if you come here because you have to, you're hurting yourself. Amen. You are. I mean, I want you to be here. You understand what I'm saying? But you've got to come because you want to. Amen. Because it's your desire to. It's your heart to be within the house of God. It, 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 it's different. That's, what, that's that idea, that relational thing. See, God shut the door on us last time. But if needed, this time we're kind of prepared for it, aren't we? We're prepared. We've got this parking lot FM radio right here, 92.1. If people feel comfortable, they can come up. They can pull up outside. We've got Facebook Live. My goodness, the Lord's taught me some technology on all of that and how to work on those type of things. All these things are here. You see, um, that's not the only thing, though, He's taught us to it. He's taught us how important it is. If you're sitting here this morning, I think you understand how important it is. Uh If you're sitting here this morning, I think you understand. And I think you understand that it is an important and it is an essential thing to do. But we still have to be aware, don't we? You see, there's a reason that God keeps the door open on some churches and some he does not. In Revelation 3, 8 there, he tells it. He says he knew their works. He set before them an open door and no man can shut it. But why? But why? For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. A little strength. That's the Greek word that we get dynamite from. Dunamis, dynamis. And it means a force. As long as we can speak, we need to speak of Jesus, Okay? Do you have that power, that dynamite in your speaking? I hate to say it and hear somebody speak about Jesus and it's just like this. And they're just going through motions and there's nothing to it. Okay? If you know Jesus, you've got to have some force in your program. Okay? Amen. You get excited about Him, alright? And if you don't, you're, you're really putting a shame on the gospel. Okay? There's got to be some force there. There's got to be some dynamite there. As long as we can walk, we need to carry His gospel outside this church. If the only gospel that ever comes out of your mouth is while you're sitting in these pews, there's a problem, okay? It ought to be down at the workplace. It ought to be down at the schoolhouse. It ought to be out at the restaurant or at the uh, shopping mall. You ought to be bringing that out, Okay? Don't be let the devil and the government and whatever else fear you into not speaking about Jesus, all right? Amen. Because that's the kind of church that God keeps the doors open on, okay? And I'm not just talking about them two physical doors over here in the corner, all right? I'm talking about keeping spiritual doors open. Spiritual doors. So there's a little strength. A little strength. He said, I kept it open because of that. And the devil will tell you, you don't have strength to overcome. But you do. You do. Why? Because God gave it to you, didn't he? God gave it to you. Second thing he says there, says they kept my word. That's the word logos. Logos is actually a name for Jesus. In John 1.1 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You know what that word word was? It was logos. That's what that Greek word is. And the idea there is, when Jesus speaks, 
then you are hearing the Word of God because He is God, right? Amen. Let me tell you something. Right here in this Bible, Jesus is speaking all throughout it. He speaks every word that comes forth from it, okay? Don't let this nonsense or this new intellectual idea say, well, we don't know if the Word of God is the Word of God, and let's cut this out and let's throw that out. Folks, I, that's a bunch of... I ain't going to say what that is right here, okay? Amen. Right? Right? You need to throw that out with the trash, all right? This is the Word of God that liveth and abideth forever, okay? Amen. You need to hear what it says. But it's not just knowing that in your head, okay? It's not just the idea, well, I know what the Word of God... I know about Adam and Eve. I know all these different facts and figures that come from the Word of God. I know, no, 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 no. That's fine to know, but you've got to know, okay? You've got to know here in your heart. You've got to apply it. You've got to... Keep my word. Those who have kept my word. It's one thing to know about God's word or what God's word says. And it's another thing to keep it. To keep it. I read in here it says to love one another. And we've run across that. Well, that's a nice sentiment, right? Now hear that coming from the words of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Love one another. You think he meant for you just to kind of pass over that and say, well, I know it says in the Bible to love one another, right? Right? I know it says that, but you know, I don't have to do that. I don't really have to love people that I don't always get along with or I don't always uh, fit, fit right with together. <laughs> Boy, we, we, we make up things in our mind to make everything okay. If this is God's Word and it says that, you better take it to heart, all right? You better keep what it says. Amen. It says in this Word, don't to be conformed into this world. Don't let the world change your way of thinking. Don't let the world change the outside of who you are. Don't let it conform you. Kind of like Play-Doh. You know, you get it and you conform it into whatever image you want it to be, right? It says that in there, and we hear that, and I know about that, but do we keep it? Do we make sure that we're different than this world, that we're separate from the people out here that are, are lost and going to hell? Are we living a different life? Huh? I know it's convicting. It kicked me in the shins before it got yours, okay? Amen. It is. But that's true. Are we living it? Are we doing what? Are we keeping His Word? The Word says, study to show thyself approved. Do we not even know what it says so we know to keep it? Are we not studying it out to see what it says on our own? My goodness, it's the greatest privilege in all of history to be able to study the Word of God, okay? People haven't been able to do this for centuries, okay? But you have the Word of God right in front of you. And if you don't open it up and study over it and see what it says, how can you ever even imagine that you're going to keep it? All right? How can you even imagine that? Amen. But that's the kind of church they keep the doors open on, that the Lord keeps the doors open. It says here, they not denied my name, the Greek word onoma, name. Is it possible? It is possible to claim Christ and not know Christ. You understand me? It's possible. It's possible to deny his name as having any part of your, with yourself, even though you come to church every Sunday. Peter did this three times. Peter, the head of the apostles, denied Jesus three times right before he was going to the cross to die for his sins. And we've read that, right? Amen. We've heard what it says. We know the knowledge of that, that Peter did this. And then we read later that Jesus had to reinstate him at the end of John, right? He looks at him and says, Will you feed my sheep? And all that he reinstates him. Peter didn't know that. Peter didn't know he would reinstate him. We look at that and say, Well, it's automatic. Even if I do this, God's going to reinstate me. God's going to put me back in this ministry or do this thing. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't, don't just say, God, I'm going to continue in this sin so that grace may abound, as, a, as Paul preaches, right? No, don't think I'm just going to continue in that and it'd be okay. God, you're denying His name there. It is a big deal. Some will enter into heaven one day or they'll walk to the door. In Matthew 7, 23, it says, Jesus will say that they made a profession of faith they acted in Christian ways, but they never really had a relationship with him because he'll say, I never knew you. And that should strike a chill up everybody's back that heard those words. Amen. I never knew you. And then he will point them to eternal judgment off to the side instead of into life eternal. 
because they never had life while they were here. They were just like the rest of the world. They were no different than anyone else. Folks, those three things. Ask yourself this morning. I'm, I mean, the church isn't this building. The church isn't anything. The church is these people here right now. And you need to each one ask yourself, am I got a little strength towards what God wants me to do? Do I, I keep His Word? Am I not denying His name in my lifestyle? Ask yourself that. And you'll see why your door is either open or shut here this morning, okay? You see, there's also hindrances. Don't think that a door being open means that there won't be any hindrances that take place, all right? It, it says here in Revelation 3, 9, in this open door church, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So he's saying in the judgment, they're going to realize how foolish they were to stand against the church of God, this synagogue of Satan, right? He's saying they're going to realize that. But they ain't realize it right now. Because this church was living with this synagogue of Satan attacking them, constantly coming at them. Uh, Satan's minions trying to destroy them. And so Jesus says that even while the door is open spiritually, even while the door is open physically, expect opposition. Expect opposition. Sometimes he'll sneak in from the inside and expect opposition. Okay? Opposition will occur. And... Um, in Matthew 24, I want you to hear these words. In Matthew 24, Jesus talks about uh, the beginning of the tribulation. And, and he says there, uh, they come and they asked him a question. Right before the crucifixion, when uh, will uh, you return? When will you set up your kingdom? And, and what will that look like? And uh, this is the what. What will be the signs of his coming? He says, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That's false prophets, right? Then he says that be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. He says there's going to be wars that take place, right? Then there shall be famines. Y'all know what a famine is. It means there's a lack of food. There's a lack of supplies that are around you. And then he says there'll be pestilences, diseases. COVID maybe, I don't know. There'll be things that come out uh, from that. And then he speaks about earthquakes in diverse places. Natural disasters occurring all around. And then he says all of these are just the beginning of sorrows. Now if you do a deep study of the Word of God and you go to Revelation chapter 6 where the seven seals are first opened up and it's the beginning of the tribulation right after the rapture takes place, you'll feel all that stuff falls right in line. All right in line with what Jesus is saying in Matthew 24. But I want you to see is, what's the problem with these things? They're all bad things, right? Have we seen these things in our lifetime? Have you seen false prophets? Yeah. Have you seen wars? Yeah. Have you seen uh, famines? Yeah. Have you seen pestilences? Amen, oh my. Yeah, I've seen them a lot here lately, right? Uh, have you seen earthquakes, natural disasters? All these things are normal things, but all these things are going to come all at once here at the beginning of this tribulation. And it won't be uh, just normal. It'll be God's wrath coming upon the earth. But one other thing, actually those are bad things, but here's the second thing to see. All those things hinder the gospel message. We're always going to have things that are going to hinder the gospel message. You understand? There's always going to be something that's going to try to prevent that message from coming about. But here, even in the midst of what we go through right now, even in the midst of what's going to happen after we leave this church, leave this world in the rapture, even then, God leaves us an open door. An open door for people to come. In Matthew 24, 14, he's laying all this out and he says, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The door is held open even in the worst time. Even when the whole church is gone, God's going to raise up some people to preach the gospel. Amen. They don't shut the door! God will shut the door when He's ready, but He can shut the door on your heart, okay? He can shut the door on your heart. Amen. You don't just have free reign completely forever. It can be shut. There's a final door coming for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. It talks about here in Revelation 3.10, this verse, to this open door church, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. 
And then he says there in 2436, Matthew 2436, but of that day and hour, when they, you know, they asked him when, that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, when all this stops. And all this stops. The point is this. Sometimes doors are open. Sometimes doors are closed. Are you stepping through the door that's open for you right now? The door that's open. The opportunity that is here. Are you taking advantage of that door being open because it could be closed? If the door is open for you here today, what are you going to do with it? Do you understand that there's an urgency about what's going on out here in the world today? As you see people falling and dying all around you, as you see the violence rising up in the streets, do you not see there's an urgency about getting the gospel out to all the world here today? Do you not realize how important the ministry is that we're doing right here is right now? Because we have a tendency to say, well, I'll do it later. I'll get the opportunity taken care of then. I'll work on all those things another day. Oh, I'll get myself where Jesus wants me to be tomorrow, right? Well, Jesus will get you right where you need to be today if you get out of the way, okay? And walk through the door. Walk through the door. It's open, but it ain't always going to be open. Every one of you, I promise you, in a hundred years, you're all going to be dead. You're going to be standing before the, before the eternal throne of God. Amen. Every single one of you. Every single one. And what will all this world that we've been fooling around with be? Burn up. Gone. Disappeared. And every little moment you had, every little moment you had during all this time, did you use it for God's glory? Or did you use it for something that's going to burn up and fly away? Church, we don't know how long, much longer we have. I remember preaching a message to a, a very low congregation the day before COVID hit, the day before we shut the doors. And I remember some people come forward and they bowed down their heads to pray. Folks, I tell you what, we don't know if we have tomorrow. Amen. We don't know if we have an hour or two. Amen. We don't know what's going to happen. Amen. But folks, if God's called you to do something here this morning... Won't you come to this altar and work out the deal with him right here? Won't you come up here and do it? Quit putting things off. Quit acting like nothing. It, 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 I'm going to live forever. That's the idea. I'm going to live forever. We all have that lie of the devil in our head. We're not. All that matters is what was done for Jesus Christ. All that matters is this. Is the door to salvation open for you this morning? Won't you take it? Won't you take it? Is the door to ministry open for you here this morning? Why don't you walk through? Why don't you take that first step? Is the door to witnessing open to you this morning, maybe throughout this week? Is it open? Walk through the door. Is the door to repentance and change in your life open? That God's going to make you even closer to what He wants you to be? Walk through. Walk through. Which one's open for you here today? I don't know, but you do. You do. I hope you're enjoying the sermons here and have subscribed to my channel on YouTube, but I would love even more to meet with you in person at the Omega Baptist Church.